What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. Today we're going to focus in on uh, the Erica Branson, Erica Branson situation. Three, three, uh, three word phrase, all quotes, of course, and um, what the Florida Panthers should do. You know, I like Erica Branson as a player. I do. However, I didn't like the Florida Panthers drafting him number three in 2010. It was bef the the last draft for the Power Play existed. So I'm not on the record, so you know. But I would have taken Cam Fowler. Hell, I would have taken Cam Fowler with Tyler Sagan. Uh, you know, 2010, I was still on a Camp Fowler addiction spree. But bottom line, it never really fit for him in Florida. He couldn't play in the NHL at 18 because of contract dispute, which, you know, I, that's you, – you're very, very, very rarely going to happen at entry-level deals. So I don't know who to give credence to. I'm sure it's both sides are really screwing up to a frazzle. And then, you know, his first year, you know, Florida, you know, they surprised some people to make the playoffs. Um, you know, he, he scored two goals um, in that season, hasn't scored a goal since. Um, and then last year, what I thought would have been a breakout year for him, didn't get an AHL seasoning during the lockout because he, he got hurt wakeboarding, uh, which I'm not going to knock him for. It's, you know, what are the odds someone gets hurt wakeboarding? I, it's happened, I've done it all, you know, a bunch of times, and I've never I suffered a serious injury, so I, I can't fault him for that. But, you know, I just. I think it's time for a divorce. I really think he's at that point, <laughs> the Florida Panthers point in a relationship where you look at Horton, you look at Froelich, um, you know, guys that were highly high draft picks by the Panthers that went on to achieve success as role players on Stanley Cup championship team. Horton was a really role player. He was one of the key guys on the Bruins 2011 Cup team. But you catch my drift. Same thing with Froelich, you know, never really became a star in Florida, but, you know, played very well for Chicago in a limited role, you know, doing his – you know, niche, like I said, repeat word. Uh, I mean, you know, Branson came in as a defensive defenseman, had a little bit of offensive upside. They talked about how great his shot was. But he did three, I think he had three goals this draft year, so it's really um, a lot of power, not a lot of accuracy. And then going a step further with um, him, he's minus 50 in three. You know, I think he's played 119 games, so under two seasons. He's got. See, here's. The, I think it'd be naive for a team to trade for him. Expect him to be a Norris Trophy winner. It's not going to happen. Um, but if you trade for him and give him a role, a specifically defined role that's conducive to his skill set, I think he could be an amazing pickup for a contending team, a contending young team. <laughs> Two come to mind. One's Colorado. They got amazing forwards. Add him to the mix. You know their, their shots against go down, and uh, you know their forwards are allowed to be a little more creative. Knowing he's back there again, give him a role. You're a shutdown guy. You're not, you know, going to be this all-around defenseman. Your goal is to, you know, block shots, clear the crease, and do that. The best fit for him though would be the Ottawa Senators. He's an Ontario kid. Played the Kingston Frontenac the XDOHL. They got amazing young forwards. They got some pretty good young defensemen. That guy Carlson, he's okay. He's aight. Um, and I think Gabranson definitely, his skill set would definitely complement and, um, you know, help those guys play their game, you know, in terms of clearing the crease and just doing the little things. Um, I think Ottawa's going up like 37 shots a game. I mean, having him back, they will cut down on that and allow him to become a good player in his own right. You know, maybe he'll never be a number one defense, but he can become a very, he can become a very solid top four guy on a contending team like Ottawa. And if I were the Panthers, I'd try to fleece, um, Ottawa for was it Zabanajad? I'd do it. I'd package Gabranson with whatever to get uh, to get my hands on because Zabanajad, but because I know he's been up and down this year, so that's something to keep an eye on. And plus, you look at the 2010 draft. Nino Niederreiter got traded from the Islanders because it just they mishandled his development. It wasn't going to happen for him in Uniondale or Brooklyn for that matter. Dumb joke. And uh, he. He's played very well for Minnesota, so I think a similar situation can happen where I, I thought Nino Niederreiter was going to be the next um, Rick Nash. That obviously hasn't been the case, but he can become a very solid top six forward in the NHL and have a long career. It's important to note with both Niederreiter and Gabrantz, they're both 21 years old. They're, um, you know, they got they got a whole future ahead of them, but uh, sometimes it doesn't happen with the team that drafts you. So we'll, we'll keep your eye on this situation, but if talent starts blowing stuff up, expect um, Eric Gabrantz to be a member of the Colorado Avalanche or Ottawa Senators, calling it. Anyway, that's all in this episode of the Power Play with CJ on the proverbial Eric Branson situation. Situation, three letters, three words, excuse me. Stay tuned for more episodes for the season and beyond. Later, guys.